Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're going to be providing some background information on axial loads and axial load diagrams. So let's go ahead and get started. First, what is an axial load? What is this thing that we're calling an axial load? Well, axial loads are loads that are directed along the longitudinal axis of a member. Okay, so let's look at a few illustrations. In this illustration right here, we have this member. Uh, it's a horizontally oriented bar, and we see that it is uh, subject to an axial compressive force that we're calling C. Now, for this to be in equilibrium, the compressive force on one end has to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction with respect to that same compressive force at the opposite end. And if you notice that that compressive force is directed along the long axis, the longitudinal axis of the member. So this is an axially loaded member and in particular it's subject to a uh, axial compressive load, okay? Now let's take a look at this member here. Uh, this member is oriented at some angle. You notice that it's not really horizontal or vertical. It's at some arbitrary angle. And it's subjected to an axial force F. And notice that at one end you have F, and then at the other end you have the same magnitude force F, but it's pointed in the opposite direction compared to the other end. In particular, this uh, force F is a tensile force because it tends to elongate this member. And again, F is directed along the longitudinal axis of the member. What about this third illustration? Well, we have a vertically oriented member that is fixed at its base. That's a fixed support down here that we know from statics. And the top of the member is subject to an axial force that is pulling it upwards. Uh, which is causing tension, so I'm calling this magnitude T. And again, it's directed along the longitudinal axis uh, of that member. Now, when we analyze these members, what do we use to compute unknown forces? Well, from statics, we use our equilibrium equations. So for axially loaded members, as we're discussing about here, the applicable I'm going to write this down, applicable equilibrium equation is sum of the forces along the longitudinal axis equals zero, okay? So what we do is we sum forces along the longitudinal axis of the member and we set it equal to zero. So that longitudinal axis could be horizontal like we saw in this illustration could be vertical like we saw in our third illustration, or it could be at an angle like we saw in the second illustration. In all these cases, we're summing forces along the longitudinal axis to solve for unknown forces, okay? Now, in this third illustration, you notice that we had a fixed connection. So you might remember from statics that when you have a fixed connection, you have three reactions, right? You have uh, a force in the y direction reaction, you have a force in the x direction, and you have a moment reaction, okay? Now, here's the thing. When we are considering axial loaded members, the only applicable equilibrium equation is some of the forces are along the longitudinal axis, which means that any transverse forces and any bending moments would be zero. So when you have a situation like we have this fixed connection, in this case, the force in the x direction would be zero and the moment would be zero. So the only thing that's non-zero is this Fy reaction. And in particular, if you, can, if you just look at it, this is a simple enough case, Fy would be equal to T pointing in the downwards direction. Okay, so that's the thing to keep in mind. Applicable equilibrium equation, there's just one of them for axially loaded members, and it's summing forces along the longitudinal axis, which means that you're going to have no shear forces or bending moments in axially loaded members. Okay, let's keep discussing these. Could we have a distributed axial load? Well, if you read the bottom of the screen here, the answer is yes. A distributed axial load. 
is an axial load that is spread out over the longitudinal axis of a member, okay? So this is kind of similar to what you saw maybe in a statics course where you had a uniformly distributed load spread out over a beam. But the difference was that was a uh, transverse load spread out over a beam. Here, we're looking at a uniform axial load that is spread out along the length of the member itself. So it's still directed along the longitudinal axis. So we would call this W, and in this particular illustration, I'm looking at W as a uniform axial load. Okay, now we're gonna say W has units of force over length. So you would look at units like pounds per linear foot or PLF or um, maybe kilonewtons per meter, okay? So again, think of this as a force that's spread out along the longitudinal axis of a member. So one fun illustration, when we were kids, we used to play tug of war, right? So when all these people are gripping a rope and you have these people gripping the rope uh, with, hand, with their hands near each other and pulling, that rope is subject to something similar to an, a uniformly distributed axially loaded uh, axial load, okay? And that rope would be subject to a force per length. Real quick, if you haven't seen this symbol, looks like a triple equal sign, this means has units of. So if you ever see that symbol in a math or engineering course, it looks like a th uh, an equal sign, but with three vertical or three horizontal lines, that means the phrase has units of force per length in this case, okay? So last piece of this background information, axial load diagrams. Axial load diagrams show the variation of an axial force with member length. What we do is we plot axial force versus member length. So what we can do is generate a plot where on the vertical axis we have axial force and then the horizontal axis we have member length, okay? And then what we can do is show graphically how the axial force changes throughout a member's length when we're considering an axially loaded member. What is this very similar to? This concept is very similar to what you might have learned in statics about shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. This is an axial load diagram, okay? So similar in concept, but still physically different than a shear force diagram or a bending moment diagram. So that's gonna conclude our preliminary background information on axial loads. We're gonna have a few follow-up videos where we do some simple examples uh, illustrating and exercising these concepts. So if you found this video helpful, please hit like and subscribe and check out the other videos like it. Thanks for watching.